The next thing we're going to talk about has to do, again, with phenols, but how do phenols react? There are two main ways you're going to see a phenol react. And this isn't including your generic additions to benzene chapter stuff. So like, no uh, real crass reactions where you react with this, ALCL3, nothing like that. I'm talking about actual things that you need to know mechanisms of. So there are two main ways you're going to see phenol react mechanistically. And it really depends on the context of the question. For example, let's say I have this, and it's a mechanism question. They say, how does phenol this become this with the use of uh, CO2? With the use of CO2. Okay, so. <clears throat> It's all about the context of the question. Now, we gave you the product, we gave you the reactants. So you just have to draw the arrows that makes the most sense to get this. Well, remember what phenol is. At its core, it's an OH on a carbon-carbon double bond, an enol, right? And we know how enols like to react. The electrons of the oxygen will look to swing down, and then this double bond would be pushing electrons onto there, making that carbon negative, so that carbon is going to go out and make, an, make a bond to something. If we draw out what CO2 looks like, it's C double bond O, double bond O. The electrons of this double bond can attack that carbon. And that's how we can connect this carbon to another carbon over here, this carbon in the middle. Okay? And if we do that, well, carbon would have five bonds, so something has to move to make room for it. One of the oxygens will move its electrons up. And we'd be left with... OH positive double bond and now we made a bond to the carbon which had a double bond O and then a double bond O that swung up becoming O minus. Then we have a double bond here and a double bond there. Well we're already almost there right because we have O minus so we just need to protonate that and we need to turn this double bond OH positive back into single bond OH neutral, make, remaking a double bond here. Or actually, I'm going to double bond. This double bond should be here and here. Pardon that. So we need to reform a double bond here. So you have a couple options. You might think, all right, let's do, just do a proton transfer, make this oxygen grab this, and neutralize the two. But then you wouldn't reform the double bond here. So what you should do to save yourself time and effort. We want to make this stay OH, right? But if we look at the difference in hydrogen count, this carbon has zero hydrogens, this carbon has one. Pull off that hydrogen instead of this one. So the oxygen will come in, grab that hydrogen, the electrons swing down, and this swings up to the oxygen, and those three arrows will get you to what you wanted. So the first way phenols will react is just like any other enol you've seen since chapter uh, since the second exam, even. Okay? The other way is a little more particular, and it kind of has to do with a reaction you actually learned from Orga 1. And that is, that is in the context of something called the Williamson ether synthesis. <clears throat> so, Williamson ether synthesis. First of all, what is an ether? Remember, an ether is any oxygen that has two bonds to a carbon, but it's not a carbonyl, so no C double bond O, just carbon, oxygen, carbon, single bonds. Okay? So how do we make ethers in the context of phenols? So we have OH, we have our benzene. How can I turn this, how can I make an ether with this? Well, <clears throat> one thing to keep in mind is a concept we brought, uh, it, we taught in, for the first exam just how stable benzene is. It's an aromatic ring, which means in general it doesn't like to lose its aromaticity. In that last example we did, we lost it temporarily, but it, the benzene reformed at the end. In this example, the benzene will never even be touched. Namely, what do you need for the Williamson ether synthesis? Step one, a strong base, typically NaH, but honestly, it's not limited to that. 
remember, Na positive H minus. But it could be, <coughs> um, I think I've seen OH minus even used, so it doesn't have to be limited to this. And then step two is some carbon chain with a leaving group on it, so let's say a bromine. Okay? So the first step shouldn't be anything new. You have a base and you have an acid. That H minus grabs your proton, electrons swing up to the oxygen, and now you have an O minus. So you have O minus carbons on the ring. Okay? Now, rather than this oxygen swinging down in the carbon going out and attacking, the oxygen will do the attack. And this is, again, specific to this reaction. In general, enols and enolates will always do what we saw in the first example. Oxygen swings down, and the carbon makes the bond. This is the one exception to that rule we've been drilling into your head, the Williamson ether synthesis. If your goal is to make a carbon-oxygen bond, well, this is acceptable because in the context of benzene, benzene is an aromatic ring, and it doesn't want to give up that aromaticity. So rather than swing down and break that aromatic ring, it's going to stay aromatic, not affect the benzene at all, and just use the oxygen to do the attack. Okay? So that oxygen will go out and attack the carbon with leaving group on it, like so. And take that leaving group out. And what you will form at the end of this reaction is now single bond oxygen, but this carbon chain, one, two, three carbons, will be attached to that oxygen, one, two, three. Okay? So that would be your final product of this example. And those are the two main ways you're going to see the uh, the phenol react, either acting as an enol in the same way we've seen it, uh, seen enols react every every previous exam, or this particular situation where the O minus does the attack because the ring doesn't want to break its aromaticity. And it'll always be clear based on the context of the question.